Hello everybody and welcome back to this episode of the Ruston Diaries and today we're at the Mid Suffolk Light Railway because today this thing is getting new shoes. Yes, it's a long way today that has been two whole years in the planning to swap the wheel set from 294266 over from the wheel set from 393303. So I am very excited and as soon as the crane gets here then we can get started. These are the locomotives of the LMM fleet, a collection of vintage diesel shunting engines. In this series we delve into the world World of railway heritage, showcasing the highs, the lows, and the sheer effort involved in repairing, maintaining, and restoring these icons of the industrial age. Join Laurie and the team of knowledgeable experts and dedicated volunteers, and share the experience of owning and operating a fleet of full-sized locomotives. LMM proudly presents The Locomotive Diaries. The vintage vehicles can prove quite the challenge when looking for spare parts, and locomotives are no exception, and sometimes those parts just don't exist at all, and so the only way forward is to manufacture brand new shiny replacement parts like these. Enter our friends at Black Stag Engineering who can make things like this shiny new brake pedal or this lightsaber and they do absolutely superb work, able to fabricate and machine a wide variety of components for your needs. And they've partnered with us to sponsor this series and help the Rustons move forward. So let's dive in. Or just play with lightsabers. So for information on services they offer and what they can do for you, check out the links in the video description. We're really proud to have them on board as partners helping to support the LMM fleet. And with that, on with the video. Over the series so far, you've seen some of the work required to get 294266 ready for this moment. The first stage was to move it into the shed at the Mid Suffolk Light Railway, where Neil and Nigel could remove the drive chains. And after they've been removed, the loco was dragged back outside so we could make a start on removing the axle box keeps. These turned out to be absolutely disgusting, and luckily I'd ordered new ones to replace them. And following their renewal, the wheel set from 393303 was transported down to the Mid Suffolk Light Railway, and I gave it a new coat of paint. Which brings us up to this moment now, awaiting the lorry to turn up to pick this thing up so we can swap over the wheels. The most important part in all of this was having a crane, and that fell down to our friends over at SC Fabrications, who brought along this monster of a high hab that was more than capable of picking up the seven and a half ton Ruston. The only problem that we had was that the locomotive was hard up against the buffer stop, which wasn't an ideal place to undertake the lift, and that meant we had to go and fire up the 165, couple it up to the wagons at the other end of the 48, and pull everything back to make ample working room either side. With the 48 now in the correct position, the high have deployed its outriggers to give it extra stability during the lift. And with all four deployed and ready, the next stage was to wrap a strap around the wheel set so they could be lifted and moved over onto the rails, so that once we'd lifted the 48 and removed its existing wheels, these ones could be rolled underneath and we could put the thing back down. It is slightly alarming seeing something that you can barely push along picked up with such ease. Certainly, using the high hab to pick up the wheel set and manoeuvre them into position saved us all an awful lot of hard work trying to handball them into position, and obviously it was a lot safer as well. And once the first one was safely down, we could pick up the second set and move that into position as well. The moment that the new wheel sets touched down on the same rails as the 48 they were about to go under was so exciting. So much planning had led to this moment. And with the wheel sets out of the way, the operator prepared the 48 to be lifted. Coming off from the boom were four chains connected to four strops that went round each of the four buffers. So this is it, the big moment. It should now just lift up into the air and leave the wheels behind. We can roll the dead ones out of the way and roll in the new ones from 303 underneath. And that should be the first stage of this going back in service. Obviously I'm going to need to replace gaskets, put the new pads in and various other little bits that we'll need and replace the window now. But 
things are happening. Having been told to retreat to a safe distance, we were ready to begin the lift. And the trepidation was palpable. I was so excited for this to finally happen and exceedingly nervous. Locomotives do not enjoy flying. And the consequences if something went wrong were dire and would probably spell the end for my little locomotive. But this represented the quickest way to return her to service and there was no looking back now. As I watched on, the wheel sets from 294-266 made their last journey along the mid suffolk Light Railway as the team pushed them clear and got ready to move the new set from 393-303 into position. These would be placed roughly where they needed to go and then the Ruston would be moved over the top and the fine tuning and final positioning would take place and then all being well, the 48 would neatly drop down on top of the axles. Being able to lift the 48 entirely clear of where we were working made this process so much easier than the traditional jacking and packing and then trying to lift the wheel set underneath whilst the thing was in the air. Although it was slightly ominous the way the thing was just floating. That said, I don't know any other locomotive owners who can say that their engine is capable of VTOL flight. I don't like this. This isn't natural. It's not meant to be like that. Luckily, the 48 wouldn't have to stay airborne for much longer as the wheels had now been chocked in position and the protective plastic taken off the journals. We are now ready to attempt a landing. And after her short flight, she successfully had touched down on her new wheel set back on terra firma, which meant the operator could go around and unhook all of the strops from the buffers and from the chains and start getting ready for the next job. 
and that was to lift the old wheel sets clear of the railway and place them on the line side ready for collection and reprofiling, as the plan is that this set is going to go away and get new tyres fitted and then be replaced back under 294-266, at which point the wheel set that's been moved under it from 393-303 will also be sent away and retired as well which will give me two Ruston 48s with new tyres on their wheel sets, which hopefully means that they will be able to see service for many, many more years to come. Which of course is the point of doing all of this, to be able to bring the 248s back into service so they can actually earn their keep and be enjoyed by the public, helping to tell the story of silly little diesel locomotives. Once again, the crane proved to be invaluable in moving the wheel sets away from the railway ready for that later collection, and I must thank SC Fabrications for their efficiency and professionalism in undertaking this lift. Certainly for the chap who had come along, this was a bit of a different move, having to pick up a locomotive and put it back down, and he said, I've never actually picked up a locomotive before. With Sir William no longer blocking the view, it's a lot easier to see how bad the profile has got and how thin the flanges are on this wheel set, which of course was the reason that the engine was taken out of service. Lots of people have mentioned about getting them turned, but unfortunately the profile is so bad there's simply not enough meat left to restore the flange. The one on the left hand side you can see is particularly bad and is basically a knife edge. And that means that this wheel set will have to be turned flat and then a metal tyre heat shrunk around the outside and that will then be cut and reprofiled to make the new flange. And with all of his tasks completed, the chap from SC Fabrications tidied everything up, hopped in his truck and headed off. So the not to be move board's gone on it because it's got no bottoms on the extra boxes so a rough shunt and it could go and off. So do not move board. Now, a little bit of railway trivia for you. If you don't know this, a do not move board can only be taken off by the person who put it on. So this now is completely immobile because I have put it on. And unless I take it off, Nobody can move this Ruston now, so it is stuck here. And so that is the end of today's excitement. The Ruston is now on its new wheel set. It's not back in traffic yet, but it has progressed forward. This is a huge step forward to this thing coming back into traffic. So thank you all very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking over there for the last episode of the Loco Diaries, or down there for, well, perhaps the adventure of when we went to pick this thing up. And thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Ta-ra!